tighter we can maintain the tolerance without getting rubs, uh, obviously the more power we will get out of the engine. We're beyond the point where solid airfoils can do the job from an engine standpoint. We need hollow airfoils. We're talking about high temperature super alloys. So you electrochemically machine them. In other words, the whistle blows when you get the players out in the field, and that's where product support starts. And we have to play the game. That's after you've delivered the product. Because there are so many things that uh, have to be checked out before this engine goes out. This gives us a perfect engine. But this is the culmination of all our efforts. The actual proof of the pudding is, does the engine run and perform as it should do? the balance of power is a notable feat. To maintain the margin of strength is an even more formidable challenge in our time of revolutionary technology. The strength of the free world is dependent on its military air superiority, and air superiority depends on the power of the jet. The people at General Electric are committed to making jet engines better. Since 1942, they've produced almost 60,000 aircraft turbine engines. Craftsmen and engineers, many with more than 25 years' experience, continue to build in new standards of performance and reliability and reflect the skills and resources of the company that produced America's first jet engine. More than 20,000 General Electric military turbine engines are now in service. Throughout the world, they power 32 types of aircraft, accumulating over 15,000 flight hours every day. The T-58, which pioneered U.S. turbine-powered helicopter flight, is the smallest General Electric military engine in production. But each man has a responsibility to see that that engine going up the line has got to be a quality product. They had two pilots in here, and they was praising our engines up and down the line because they said that they, they're in and out to pick up and get in and get out quick, and that's what they need. They got plenty of power, and they love them. The T-58 can produce up to 1,870 horsepower and is the world's most widely applied helicopter engine. With over 10 years of field experience, this engine has been proven in every type of mission. The T-58 has seen extensive service in Southeast Asia, powering a variety of helicopters for combat assault, rescue and recovery, and for vertical supply. T-64 turboshaft and turboprop engines deliver more than twice the power of the T-58. I've been here at the G about 24 years now. I've been working on jets most of my life. My son just come back from Vietnam. So he was working on the engines out there. Designed for low fuel consumption and high reliability, the T-64 powers both rotary wing and fixed wing aircraft heavy assault helicopters, air rescue helicopters, an advanced aerial fire support system, short takeoff and landing medium transports, patrol aircraft for the Japanese Navy, and a tilt-wing vertical takeoff and landing transport. T-64s will power a new Italian medium transport now under development and a new German vertical takeoff and landing transport. The J-85, General Electric's smallest turbojet. It delivers more power per pound of weight than any other engine in production. What we try to keep in mind is that these things are going up in the air and uh, there isn't room for mistakes. The J-85 has logged more than 5 million flight hours in 15 types of military aircraft. Afterburning versions can produce up to 5,000 pounds of thrust. Non-afterburning versions power a number of high-performance subsonic aircraft. Twin J-85s provide immediate strike power for attack aircraft. Because of its compactness and high thrust-to-weight ratio, it is used for boost power on medium assault transports and powers experimental vertical takeoff and landing aircraft.
The J-79 is General Electric's largest military turbojet in production. This is your baby and you're responsible from the time you start until you finish. I'm as concerned about one as I would be the other as far as reliability would be concerned. Capable of producing 17,900 pounds of thrust, the J-79 has become the free world's Mach 2 workhorse. It is the power plant for the Starfighter, a multi-mission supersonic fighter. The Hustler, a supersonic bomber. The Vigilante, an attack bomber and reconnaissance aircraft. And the Phantom II, a Mach 2 fighter interceptor. The TF-39, the most powerful military engine in the world. This high bypass turbofan can produce more than 41,000 pounds of thrust. You feel like you've accomplished something, especially when you send it to test, because you're one of the last men to look at it before they wind it up. It gives you a feeling that you've accomplished something, when you, especially when you see it go out the door. Four TF-39 engines lift the giant C-5, the world's largest transport, with its 132-ton payload, delivering it to any spot in the world in less than 24 hours. General Electric military engines are in service in 31 countries, making service and support a vital global responsibility. Over 300 people stationed throughout the world keep constant watch over all General Electric military engines. They instruct operations personnel in troubleshooting and maintenance techniques. They provide immediate assistance in solving field problems. And most of all, they represent GE on the spot reporting field troubles, permitting factory action to head off problems before they become major difficulties. Take a group of personnel, base personnel, we can train them, show them this is how you do it, the next time you'll know by yourself. So it's always a need for someone, product support, to keep the personnel at the base efficient in their jobs, really. Back home, Computers help keep track of spare part inventories and usage rates, and then predict field needs to keep General Electric engines flying. Since America's first jet engine in 1942, giant strides have been made in performance and efficiency. Well, I came into the supercharger business in 1940, and it wasn't very long after that uh, we took on the IA job. Compare this engine, it's a 25 to 30 year time span, and aircraft engine technology. The TF-39 puts out 30 times the thrust and only uses a fifth as much fuel per pound of thrust. In the C-5, ranges of five to even 10,000 miles are perfectly possible. And without any question, the next 30 years will give us the same amount of progress. New technology continually replaces the old. General Electric's 100 research laboratories contribute developments in chemistry, metallurgy, every phase of research. Advanced manufacturing processes are tailored to the characteristics of newly developed materials. And year after year, new engine specifications demand closer tolerances, specialized manufacturing methods, and more precise machining of engine components. In looking to the future for new engine concepts, new engine systems, we strive always for simplicity. We found looking down through the years that if we achieve simplicity, we get the things we want. Low cost, lightweight, high thrust weight ratio, good ruggedness, reliability, durability, more easily maintained parts. When we try to apply new materials such as composites, for instance, uh, new concepts and engine components, we try to put these together to realize fewer parts, greater simplicity. Simplicity is the name of the game. Innovative technology makes possible lightweight compressors that achieve greater engine efficiency by producing higher pressures in fewer stages. They're more rugged and less susceptible to foreign object damage. Lightweight, high-intensity combustors burn more efficiently and produce less smoke. The higher the operating temperatures, the more efficient the engine. Sophisticated air cooling techniques permit advanced turbines to operate in gases whose temperatures far exceed the thermal limits of the turbine materials. As engines become more sophisticated, so do the methods for testing them. 
Extensive environmental testing assures the reliable performance of individual components and the complete engine. The high altitude facility at Evendale, Ohio can test engine performance at simulated speeds up to Mach 3 and altitudes over 80,000 feet. General Electric's crosswind facility at Peebles, Ohio creates environmental wind conditions up to hurricane velocity. Thorough testing prepares the engine for flight, the ultimate test. Engines for a new generation of aircraft are now under development. Advanced turboshaft and turboprop engines with ratings up to 25,000 shaft horsepower for assault and heavy lift helicopters and fixed wing aircraft. Augmented turbojets for tactical fighters. High bypass turbofans for anti-submarine warfare aircraft and transports. Augmented turbofans are demonstrating technologies for new engines to power air superiority fighters and strategic aircraft. Uh, it's a certain amount of invention involved in this, but the invention is really a way to use what you know in a way you've never used it before. A way to take what you've learned in little bits and pieces and adapt this technology specifically to a given military requirement. The research continues. The search for innovation in design, for improvements in materials, for new technologies. The people of General Electric are dedicated to making today's engines better. And they will continue to provide power for the aircraft of tomorrow.